Hello and welcome to this podcast, which is part of a series called Inventing Embodiment. My name is Jonathan Burrows. I'm a choreographer and also a faculty member at the Centre for Dance Research at Coventry University. Last year, my colleagues at CDARE met online once a week to talk, and the conversation kept coming back to the question of how we speak about embodiment. This podcast aims to capture some of the research I was fortunate to hear then. My guest this morning is Kate Marsh, who is an artist researcher at CDARE. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. Can you start by telling us a little bit about what you're researching and working on at the moment? Absolutely. So my research as a disabled artist researcher, which feels important to clarify, is largely focused on the dance and disability sector within contemporary dance practice and research. So alongside my work at CDARE supporting PhD students and working on shared bids with colleagues and um, shared research projects is always for me centered on the ongoing question of who is and isn't in the spaces that we share as dancers and dance researchers and if not why not and how can research and practice impact on that and since we're thinking about ideas or approaches or perspectives on embodiment in what way might ideas of embodiment be important to the work that you're doing or not? For me, it's incredibly important. And that's why I was really pleased to join this conversation because I think there are multiple aspects of contemporary dance practice and research that can feel very codified for artists who come into the sector and work in the sector through a non-traditional pathway. So I think for me, embodiment is one of those terms or ways of thinking that can, we have an assumed understanding that we all know what it means. And yet there, for me, is not enough nuanced discourse around how we all understand it, which is why I really welcome this conversation. And I think when these terms are quite obscure, or we all assume that everybody understands them in the same way, what I've witnessed and experienced is that that really isolates and leaves out people who are not included in that codified language. Embodiment for me is particularly interesting because I have more than once made the claim that disabled people do embodiment better. And I deliberately made that claim to be controversial and to include disabled artists in the discussions that I was regularly involved in. And as a, as a way to shift the position, to shift the disabled artist as apprentice or always in the learning role from established non-disabled practitioners and when I started to think and talk about embodiment with colleagues it just became really apparent to me that the experience of living in a body that is not served by and met by a society that is uh, dominated by ideas of the, the normal body that actually we're embody- we're, we are feeling embodiment all the time. We, we never leave the body behind. So it, embodiment is not something that starts and stops in the dance studio or in the places that we do our practice. And I do, I do understand, as I say that, that of course nobody leaves their body behind. But I, I became really interested in what it means if you are consistently uh, adapting in the world and having to sharply focus on the feeling of the body and the the, um, doing of the everyday and pedestrian that what does that mean how does that speak to embodiment as a way we understand it in in dance and what can dance learn from the experience of disabled people and embodiment is embodiment a word that would be used within wider discourse around disability is it a word that you that you come across used by other uh, thinkers and, and, and writers and activists? That's such a good question. The immediate answer is n- no. In kind of non-arts context, no, I don't think embodiment is a widely used term. I certainly think it's a term that's being more widely used within conversations around the disabled body in dance and the experience of disability. Because I I think for the the reasons that I've started to point out that it's a useful vehicle Mm 
I'm really, I'm really reluctant to use the word empowerment because I struggle with it. But I think there is something around being able to use the term embodiment in academic and scholarly context when we talk about disability. It shifts the playing field somewhat that it's, there's not a sense of borrowing a term that doesn't necessarily belong to the experiences of disabled people. So, uh, it, yeah, in, in brief, it's not, I think it's, it's emerging as a, it, it just, I feel quite hopeful about embodiment as a way of thinking or as a term, because I think it includes disabled artists in a very different way. And what would be a, an example, for instance, of a use of embodiment within contemporary dance that might exclude somebody with disability? Oh, that's a hard question. I think it goes back to my earlier point that, that where my frustration lies with the dominant use of embodiment as a term that we use in so many aspects of our dance research and dance practice is that point about assumption. And I think that's where the marginalisation occurs. And there are so many terms that I can think of, but I think I was thinking about this a year or so ago, that when we talk about embodiment, it often gets talked about in this incredibly vague way. So you might hear somebody say, oh, that dancer is really embodying the work, or even that dancer is really embodying their body. And the more I, I started to unpack those sentences when I was encountering them, there's very little meaning behind that, that actually, who's making that decision? Where are we seeing embodiment? So that, that I think, is where the, the sense of marginalisation occurs. The reality is that many disabled artists do not go through that socialisation in dance that happens in a training. So in a traditional training, I think that's where we pick up these assumptions about what, this ter- what lots of our terminology means. And because many disabled dance artists are introduced into the professional sector through, uh, there's a delightful term, through a bespoke training, which to me now smacks of just letting everyone off the hook and not having to think about how we include a range of people in our training contexts. So I think not having that socialisation into, oh, we just all know what embodiment means, can mean that it's incredibly alienating when you encounter it because you haven't experienced, you haven't absorbed the terminology through a training or through multiple different types of dance jobs or dance work. So what I'm hearing from you that is that in, in some way there's a sense that embodiment is owned by a particular way of thinking about it within contemporary dance and that what you're arguing is that this needs to open up and recognise other experiences of embodiment. Would that be right? Absolutely. I mean, I don't want to reduce this to a kind of overly simplistic point, but I think that for me there's almost something of... I suppose I might call it the emperor's new clothes around embodiment, that actually lots of us talk about it or use the terminology and imagining that it's this thing this thing that we can achieve or that we all understand. Right. So hopefully that in some way answers the first part of your question. And where, where I would like to see that addressed is actually just asking just rather than than assuming or that actually when we're when we're working together or when we're doing research or practice that we we make space for the conversation about how are we all understanding embodiment because actually my sense is that it's different there isn't one way of understanding it and there also isn't an end point where we get it or achieve it and I think that feels important and then to answer the second part of your question again and this is perhaps slightly reductive I've used before the example of if you live in a disabled body, and even that raises an interesting question about embodiment for me, then the process of absolutely sharply focusing on the doing of the body happens from the moment you encounter the obstacles and barriers in a world that doesn't fit disabled bodies. So in the context of dancers, that happens on the journey to the studio or the journey to the research meeting, that you're operating in a body that doesn't fit. There's this constant negotiation of it may be how do I get my body into this space? How do I how do I adapt to make sure that I can operate? Or what do I need to do to my body? How do I need to be in my body in order to be in the world? Which feels like a massive point, but I think 
for me, there's something incredibly important about what that experience can give to how we think about embodiment in dance. And again, I'm fully aware that that's all our experience. But I, for me, it's amplified in a very practical way when a disabled artist is adapting and shifting their body all the time to fit in an environment that doesn't fit them. So last question, is the terminology embodiment still useful? Can we use it well? Or is what we're looking at the possibility that we might break it down and start to see that what we're describing is often a different thing in a different context? Yes, the second part of that I would definitely align with. And I find that quite exciting as a possibility that actually when we come together, when we're practising, when we're discussing, that, I mean, that's why I, I've always enjoyed at CDARE projects that have involved non-dancers, because actually it's those that stark realisation that, for example, working with academics from the field of law on a project a few years ago, embodiment is understood in a really different way so it's being being met with when when there's five dancers in the room and we'll just talk about embodiment like we all understand what it is and then then to have that questioned by someone from a completely different field who will say sorry can you just really tell me what you mean by that and actually that's when these very tangled conversations about oh, well I'm not, I don't think it's very difficult to define and we all have a different definition so I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to see embodiment dropped, as it were, but I, I am really interested in and excited by the possibility that we can open up the conversation in a way that understands that we all understand and experience embodiment differently. And I think that could, that could be really rich in terms of how we rethink practice, how we, how we rethink research. That feels like a good place to pause. Thank you so much, Kate, for sharing you're those welcome. thoughts Thank you with for us today. Me. Yes, you're welcome.